These home videos give Jason the half memories he has of his dad, Jonathan. Sometimes it's difficult for me to separate what's kind of my actual memory and what kind of, of what, as you can probably imagine, I've watched those videos countless times growing up. He was infected with hepatitis C and HIV and he died when I was four years old in 1993. Jonathan died of AIDS because he'd been given contaminated blood products for his haemophilia. Now, the infected blood inquiry has recommended the payment of compensation should be extended to children of victims like Jason, plus bereaved parents and siblings. You can never truly compensate for what happened. You know, it's, it, it, it really is never... It's obviously not going to bring him back. But it is at least a recognition from the state that they killed my father. And it will be the recognition from the state to all those other bereaved families who haven't had it so far that they killed their loved ones too. Many who should benefit from compensation are now living on borrowed time. And so today's report also recommends pressing the accelerator on getting the final compensation scheme set up. And the inquiry chair made it clear that those sums of money must reflect not just the direct impact on the victims and their families, but also reflect the failings of the health service and the government that allowed this all to happen. Not only do the infections themselves and their consequences merit compensation, but so too do the wrongs done by authority, whose response served to compound people's suffering. With almost 3,000 lives lost and hundreds of thousands affected, the lawyer who represents many of the victims says the total compensation bill will be huge. Certainly we're looking at sums totally in excess of billions rather than billions into that area. Um, how far into the billions, I don't know. In a statement, the government said this interim report will help the UK government and devolved administrations to meet our shared objective to be able to respond quickly when the inquiry's final report is published in the autumn. Rosemary's son, Nicky, caught HIV and died when he was 25. She wants ministers to take account of how long victims and their families have already waited. They need this to be implemented as quickly as possible so that they can at least... Closure is not the right word because there's never any closure, but maybe draw a line under the, the agonies of the last 30 years. Victims and their husbands and wives have received a £100,000 interim payment. Parents, children and brothers and sisters of those who've died now have to wait to see if the government will agree to give them the same. And there is still no clear timetable for when everyone affected will finally be fully compensated for what they've been through. Cathy joins us uh, now in the studio. I mean, it is complicated, isn't it, as you said there, but what is the sort of timetable on these recommendations? Well, this inquiry chairman has um, done a bit of a sneaky move, really. He's thrown away the usual pattern of a, a public inquiry where everything's published at the end after years of work. Um, delay is harmful, he said today. So six months before the final report is due, he's basically dumped all his recommendations about compensation specifically to the government into their laps and said, right, get on with it. He also uh, gave a couple of examples where schemes like this to compensate people have been set up and he said it could be up and running in three to four months, basically. So that's Sir Brian Langstaff's ideal timetable. But did you notice that uh, the careful wording of the government response that said, this helps us to respond quickly when the inquiry's final report is published in the autumn? And today the Prime Minister was asked as well and he mirrored those words exactly. We will respond appropriately to the report when it comes, to the full report when it comes. That doesn't sound to me like this inquiry chairman has successfully bounced the government into speeding up the timetable despite the pain and the suffering he clearly feels it does to all those victims and their families. We'll keep following it. Thank you so much for that, Cathy. Thank you.